Half a day, my fellow Guamanians. On Thursday, the legislature will begin hearings on my proposals for a supplemental budget for this fiscal year and the biennial budgets for the next two fiscal years. And leading the administration's team before senators will be the director of BBMR and the acting director of administration, whom I would like to introduce to you today, Benita Maglonia. Half a day, Afanielus. Buenas noches to all those we serve. My name is Benita Manglonia. Thanks to the trust and confidence of our good governor and senators, I am proud to serve as the director of BBMR and the acting director of DOA, the latter being the agency entrusted with the accounting and spending of your tax dollars. In these times of a $349 million deficit, which has led to a severe cash management crisis, it is DOA that takes center stage on the fiscal policies and realities of your government. Before I begin discussing issues related to the administration's supplemental budget requests, I would first like to take this opportunity to apologize for the confusion caused by the financial reports that were provided to the legislature this year. Our rush to produce the first cash flow model in years rescinding of the hay plan, production of the biennial budget, standard and rate and poor's rate review, plus the supplemental budget requests, all contributed to my oversight of the errors. The confusion was caused by the unintended misclassification of accounts that should have been identified and corrected before the reports were submitted to the legislature. Thanks to Vice Speaker B.J. Cruz, we caught the errors and corrected them. In order to ensure that these errors do not happen again, I will be submitting DOA's and BBMR's corrective action procedures to the senators. Please know that my staff and I have worked long hours since we came into office and remain committed to working hard for the people of Guam and to provide accurate financial reporting. It must be stated, however, that the reporting errors did not change the bottom line. The reports did not mislead anyone as it still reflected the difficult financial condition of our government. Quite simply, after we cut the misclassifications and resubmitted correct reports, the conclusions of the reports did not change. I look forward to working with the legislature to address the real matter at hand addressing the critical cash challenges to keep governmental agencies. There has been a lot of discussion at budget hearings about the difference between revenues and cash, especially when the government is running a huge deficit. Revenues are the sources of funding that the government identifies so it can appropriate money through a budget that is passed every August. Cash is the money that the government receives from taxpayers in the form of taxes or fees, including money received from grants, loans, and bonds. Cash is what is applied to revenue fund sources. Cash makes the revenues real so the government can make good on its many financial obligations. If the cash for a specific revenue source does not come in as planned by the end of the year, then that revenue source runs at a deficit. Likewise, if the cash from one revenue source is used to pay for something else, then that revenue source from which the cash was taken will also run at a deficit. This is what occurred between October and December last year. About $58 million of which $24 million is general fund cash meant for this year's revenues were used to pay for last year's obligations. More specifically, all of the revenues received from Section 30 funds intended for this fiscal year were expended all by November. Most of the cash meant for tax credits to you were used to pay for operations and prior year refunds. On the day we came to office, $3.2 million in checks, mostly payroll, were floating at the bank. If they didn't engage in inner fund borrowings, they would have incurred an $11 million overdraft. Yes, 
when the current administration came into office, we were forced to assess Gulf Guam's financial situation and do it quickly in order to minimize the damage caused during the prior years. Fortunately, the governor began taking steps to mitigate the damage. For instance, he ordered immediate spending cuts and began prioritizing budget allotments. To his dismay, he found that UOG, GCC, and the courts were not getting their budget allotments and he ordered payments. He also ordered repayments to restricted funds that were used for general fund operations. This is why the Hay Plan had to be suspended. Because of these fiscal policies, we have been able to manage cash so as to avoid payless payday and ensure continuing continuation of government services. We are also able to pay the court orders, very few vendors, and few tax refunds. The cash is coming in and hopefully will be enough to sustain us through the fiscal year, thanks to the governor's strict policies. The biennial budget and the bond are separate matters. The bond will provide the cash we need to pay all the tax refunds by December. Those refunds have already been appropriated by the legislature, but revenues have consistently been short for the past two years to make those payments. What we are lacking is the appropriation of revenues to get us through this fiscal year. This is the supplemental budget authorization we need in order to spend the cash on regular government operations. As it stands, not only is there not enough cash to pay tax refunds as budgeted, there are not enough cash to pay for operations. The moment the fiscal year 2011 budget was passed, there were immediate budget shortfalls. The fire department was short $4 million to pay its employees. The $21.6 million appropriated already is only enough to pay employees until the end of June. If GFD does not get this money, there won't be any medics to run the ambulances and no firefighters to respond to emergencies by July. Mental health is short $1.7 million. Without this money by June, the department will have no choice but to cease services to our children and adults living with disabilities and their families. Medicare premiums for the elderly are short $285,000. The, the Medicare benefits will end in August if there is no appropriation. Supplemental annuities for the retirees is short $321,000. The annuities will run dry without an appropriation. Department of Youth Affairs is short $116,000 to pay its employees. If DYA does not get this money by June, youth service workers and others will be without work, and children needing attention at DYA will have nowhere to go. Medical, dental, and life insurance for GovGov employees is short $3.3 million, and for retirees, $8.1 million. These employees, retirees, and their families will not have insurance if an appropriation isn't made by mid-June. DISIT is short $167,000. If DISIT does not get this money, services for people living with disabilities will end in June, July. Public health is short $291,000. If they do not get this money by July, services for the most vulnerable those needing public assistance, prenatal care, immunizations, MIP, and so much more will be affected. The previous governor's office cashed out nearly $600,000 in annual leave lump sum payments that were not budgeted. The governor's office will not have any funding by June without an appropriation to take care of this bill. These are just a few of the examples. Unfortunately, there's even more. The government owes $2 million in overtime to corrections and police officers. The line agencies 
won't have enough money to pay its water bills in the fourth quarter, and Guam Memorial Hospital will continue struggling to pay for its supplies, with a 7.3 million bill to the retirement fund hovering over its operations. Unfortunately, my fellow Guamanians, the original assessments we made when we first came to office about the condition of the government came out to be true. Even the public auditor conducted an independent assessment and verified our position. Thanks, however, to our prudent management of cash, we believe we have identified viable funding sources to pay for the supplemental budget we are forced to request. What we need is the authorization to spend this money through the revenue fund sources we identified to carry this government through the end of the fiscal year. I want to be clear about why we need to ask for this authorization to fund services. We did not increase any costs. We did not go on any hiring spree. As a matter of fact, we've curtailed spending and we're only asking for supplemental spending authority to meet the bare minimum requirements to operate this government for the rest of the fiscal year. We are forced to ask for this supplemental budget because spending authority is short. In these austere times, I understand how difficult it may have been for Senator Pangilinan to produce a fiscal year 2011 budget. It's not easy to be in charge of the finances when there's not enough cash to go around. These are issues that we want to work together to correct so that together we can provide the services you expect from your government. We value the legislature's commitment to fiscal responsibility over the budgets it passes. Put uttimo, hue epok hamzo todo na senador, dan senadoras. Put favor, my lads at a sapota, esti plano ni gubit nota, ne prata azuda ita tauta, tauto guam. Adios, good night, esta gupa.